Uh, Tracy, great to have you as always. Um, Tracy says, Peter, the completion plan you shared is fantastic, especially having it where you can see it every day, which helps keep you focused. I love it, Tracy. So I use that not only to do my thesis, but also to write my, my book. I wrote a book in 2014, and uh, that was a contractual obligation uh, to the publishers uh, to complete 30,000 words by a certain date. And if I hadn't finished it, they would go and find other people to write those different chapters. So I had signed a contract that I had to finish. So it was not just my own self-inflicted deadline or an, a supervisor's expectation, but you know, I literally had to get that work done. Um, so once you picked a date that is you know, feasible, I work backwards and use the plan uh, that I shared um, in that course. And, and I really do take you step by step exactly how to do that and access to all those resources um, is absolutely free as well. And then Kamo says, Tux had Turnitin link on the library website, which we used to check our similarity report and they didn't record it. I'm not sure if that still exists. Yeah, Kamo, I don't think they're going to keep mm -hmm. a history for you. I think, you know, when I put it into Turnitin, they say, here's your, your feedback and then you've got to keep that, right? I mean, that's a document that you've got to keep. Um, and when I submitted it to my supervisors, I actually submitted it with that. And I said, look, I've done my own Turnitin submission, came out at 4%, or whatever the case may be. Um, and I presume they would have done their own um, as well. Cindy said, Peter and Gabby, I'll take your advice big time. Peter, you're referring to another student, but the advice is helpful. Sure. Okay, apologies. And I also do coaching every now and again, so I probably did get confused. But a common challenge that people have in doing research is this data collection period, especially when you're relying on doing interviews with people. Mm -hmm. And it is a big mistake for you to wait until then to start phoning and contacting people to set up interviews. Even in your proposal stage, you should be doing a couple of mock interviews to see how that process goes. And you should be active on things like LinkedIn and Twitter and other social media mm -hmm. uh, channels to get people that are interested in your topic and that are willing to um, uh, provide you with data. I had somebody phone me the other day, um, I think it was through the VITS WhatsApp group, and they were doing research into the tiling industry and I had work that uh, we were running a conference, I think, in the tiling industry just that week, you know, and I connected the two people and she managed to get access to like 30 different companies, you know. So use me, use Gabby, use the group, use Tracy Ashington. Uh, we're all available to you in the Facebook group uh, and other Facebook groups like uh, what Gabby has mentioned there. Um, Gabby, just uh, relationships with super supervisors. So Katerina says, I need to submit my PhD on 10th of December. Biggest frustration is waiting for feedback from supervisors. I keep on writing and get no feedback. Time is ticking, very nerve wracking. So Katerina, first thing is if you are at UCT, maybe Gabby can use her connections in the in the staff canteen there to, 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 to help you. But if you're not at UCT, um, what is the generic advice for dealing with supervisors, Gabby? Oh, gosh, this is a hard one. Um, I, I just find supervisors are like on a spectrum from like um, just amazing. And that's great. I had a really good supervisor to like kind of OK to like <laughs> one of my clients said that supervisors are like absent parents. They only turn up on graduation and take all the credit. So sometimes you've got those and then like sometimes they just seem to be downright evil. Um it's a very it's a very hard one it's a very hard relationship to navigate and katrina you know if you were early in the process i could maybe offer you some strategies this is a hard one though because you actually like really get need to kind of get it through at the end and get there okay on it i mean what i will say is that they'll probably come to the party eventually i don't know if that's very comforting but you know there's stuff they have to do to say it's okay for you to submit so eventually they'll come around but i, I can get that must be hugely anxiety inducing if they haven't done that yet and you're waiting on a deadline um what, what's your feedback peter what would you say in that situation my advice for dealing with supervisors um is in um one of the lessons in the first course that i pr i put on the chat which is uh, how to boost your academic performance and the technique that i teach there is to get into a weekly rhythm with your supervisors and for my phd i sent pretty much most weeks, one email to all three of my supervisors every Sunday night. And the title of the email was the number of the week of the progress that I was making um, in my PhD. So I sent probably, you know, one email over 300 weeks, but my supervisors got into quite a structured routine with me and knew that 
I would send an email on the Sunday and they would pick it up on the Monday. And the way that I structured the email, I teach that in the course as well, but I just spoke about these are the things I did last week. These are the things I'm going to do this next week. And these are the things that I need help with. And once I taught them to get into that routine, I actually improved our relationship because number one, they knew they weren't going to get lots of mails from me bugging them for stuff during the week. They knew I would be disciplined on my side to put it all into one email on a Sunday night. And that I think gave me better access to them. And secondly, the benefit to me was that I had a weekly rhythm and I teach this in the Kanban getting organized course. You know, Kanban has this idea of cadence. Uh, you need to have a rhythm, a, a, a regular weekly, daily drumbeat. Um, and so Sunday night for me, it was a bit like a carte blanche blues story. You know, if I, I, I sort of hadn't done enough of what I needed to, I had to be honest and authentic and put that in the email to them. Um, but some weeks it was a great email because I'd done a lot and I was happy to report that. But I always sent that email to them. Uh, so it structured my work processes and it consolidated the communication information into my supervisors. And if and I, and I did get into a situation like what we were dealing with and answering that was up on the screen just now. And um, because I'd had good access to them and structured that relationship quite well, I was able to then be a bit more demanding and just say, look, guys, I've been very organized and I need this now. Um, we're now getting into sort of late timelines and you've got to give us feedback. The last point I will make, Abby, and I mentioned it when we talked about that six month planning method was to build in that time. And when I developed that plan, I then sat with my supervisors in the January and I said, right guys, this is the six month plan. And I said, I'm going to go away and do the bulk of the writing. I'll still send you an email every Sunday night. But then I said, these two weeks here, and it was like this third and fourth week of April, that's when you need to be reviewing my draft. And I need feedback from you on the 29th of April. And it was in January already, right? So I teed them up way, way, way ahead of time. And every week I just reminded them, 29th of April, 29th of April, 29th of April, 29th of April. Look, they were still late, but you know, it wasn't too much after the 29th of April. So, you know, a supervisor, if I was a supervisor, and I was listening into this conversation, I would say, well, don't make your emergency or your bad planning my crisis, right? I've got 20 students that I'm dealing with. And yes, you have some supervisors that, as you say, Gabby, uh, you know, are a little bit harsh or difficult to access and others that are a lot more easier and uh, more practical to deal with. Um, but that's the worst case scenario that you've got to think about, that you're competing with other students, all demanding time and input from um, the same um supervisor okay I'll say, I'll say one more thing and i'm done but just to say katrina you have come so far oh my goodness you're so nearly done and um, you know more about your topic now probably than your supervisors so i think also just be confident to know that i i am now the expert about this thing you know i'm now basically nearly done and i think it's about you know taking some bold moves and doing what you need to do to get your supervisor over yeah, to get your project yeah. over. So yeah. I think it's confidence. And it's and exactly, yeah, it's exactly that, Katerina. I unfortunately get told I have many students in my position. That's exactly the point. That's exactly what I was saying. From their perspective, they just say, well, you know, get in line. So do my do that course there where I talk about how to build in supervisor review period uh, in your plan and then agree with that up front. And then you really sort of don't, you, they, they've got no excuse because you've prepared them for that. They, you put a plan in place that they should have anticipated and you've got a better chance. I'm not saying it's all percent, um, but we do sympathize. And uh, I guess you just have to keep nagging them. The other thing I would say is try everything, you know, email, put a notice outside their door, phone their secretary, find somebody that knows them. Obviously, you don't want to bug them and then they get irritated. Um, and you're at University of Pretoria, I believe, Katerina. So we do often have people from University of Pretoria on this webinar. And um, Mara Lee uh, is one of the student coordinators there. So perhaps she can assist you um, and we can get you the answers that you need and the support from your supervisor that you need. Okay, guys, we're wrapping up. Gabby, I've put your website um, into the chat, mythesiscoach.com. There's lots of value there from the blog. Um, the services are very clearly laid out there. You can contact Gabby to get in touch and book a consultation and invest some money uh, into her services to help you uh, complete your degree 
and get the benefits of the money that you're spending or somebody is spending on your behalf for you to get your PhD, right? So you're already spending money, you're already investing your time and somebody else's money potentially. So a little bit more just to be successful uh, through a consultation that Gabby can provide you, I think is a very worthwhile uh, investment. Gabby, closing thoughts uh, from your side. My closing thought, firstly, Peter, thank you for having me and thank you everybody for your questions and your inputs. I love this stuff, so it's a, it's a bit of a gift for me. But the last thing that I will say is that in this life, we are so torn and there are so many different commitments that we have to our supervisors, to our families, to our work colleagues. If you're like me, you will do all of those things before you will sit down and work on your thesis. Other deadlines, you know you got marking to do. If you're like me, you do your marking first. Um, you know you got to do take the kids to for an ice cream, you'll do that first because it feels like all these pressing things. But I, for me, I've had an amazing mind shift this year where I realized actually me, I am worth making myself the priority. So for me, it's my research articles. For you, it might be your thesis. You are worth putting yourself first. You are worth giving your investing that time in your own academic project and not letting everything else come first. Um, you're doing this for you, right? So give yourself that time and believe in yourself. And like I said, if we could do it, if Pete and I could get through our PhDs, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do so either. So Definitely. I believe in you and, and yeah, best of luck for your journeys.